Hello and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's special guest today is attorney Yumi Mai Kim Reynolds. She is the owner of the law office of Yumi Mai Kim Reynolds in Medina, Ohio. Her areas of practice are criminal defense, family law, bankruptcy, and juvenile law. She volunteers her time taking pro bono cases from legal aid, and she also donates her time for legal resource program for Medina County Domestic Relations Court. She received her Juris Doctorate from University of Akron with emphasis in intellectual property law. She also received a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Purdue University, and also has a master's in business administration from Illinois State University. Prior to becoming an attorney, attorney Kim Reynolds was employed at one of global Fortune 500 companies as a chemist and chemical engineer and also as intern as an intellectual property law clerk. Yumi, welcome to Law Talk. Um, thank you for having me here. Well, it's our pleasure to have you here today. And today we're going to talk about uh, a legal topic that I don't believe I ever had a show on before, and that's called pro bono representation. And I understand that not too long ago you actually received an award for that. Is that correct? Yes, um, I received a um, Attorney of the Year award from Community Community Legal Aid. I see. Uh, okay, we're, we're going to get into that mm -hmm. Community Legal Aid down down the road just a little bit because I think a lot of my viewers would be interested in that. And with your permission, we're even going to maybe put something on the screen so people know where to call if they are in need of services sure. as you. But I think we'll, we'll kick off here. Um, boy, there's lots going on. You, you, you won an award. And on top of that, this is the 50th year for Gideon. Now, for the benefit of my viewers, Gideon, is a, is Gideon versus Wainwright is a very famous case, which I'll talk to Yumi about in a minute. But it's the case that basically caused the Supreme Court to mandate that Folks that are involved in criminal matters who can't afford an attorney are given an attorney. Uh, and it's 50 years ago that, that the Warren Court did this. So here we go. I wrote, I wrote down some questions like I always do. Because this year marks the golden anniversary, actually, of the, it's a Florida case of Gideon mm -hmm. versus Wainwright, it's appropriate to talk about pro bono representation. Now, here goes. Uh, lawyers get criticized for this all the time, and maybe we deserve it but we speak English most of the time, but we always keep throwing in a little Latin. Latin yes. So here comes pro bono. What's that mean? Uh, word pro bono comes from Latin phrase pro bono public go, which, which basically translates to um, for the public good. Um, that applies, it's sort of like a volunteerism, okay. but that, uh, that term only applies to professionals. Okay. Um, like lawyers, doctors, CPAs, um, architect, marketing. Um, basically, that means we provide provide uh, uh, professional service at very low low cost or for free. I see. Uh, for those of uh, people who can't afford to pay. Okay. So, for professional folks like mm -hmm. yourself, an attorney, you are willing to give legal advice for, in essence, nothing in, under certain circumstances? A lot, a lot of times nothing um, or for very, very little fee. Okay. And for that, you were recognized recently as Attorney of the Year by Community Legal? Yes. Well, congratulations. And I just want to add that it's not just about legal representation. Sometimes a pro bono work uh, can be something like um, giving advice to nonprofit organization, um, um, a any kind of legal legal work for um, le uh, for people who, who are oh, in need. Sure, sure. Okay, so pro bono, professional services given pretty much for for nothing. Well, that okay. So the stereotypes 
of lawyers. We, we speak in Latin maybe when we don't have to, but we do. Okay, and everybody knows that lawyers are always greedy people and <laughs> make lots of money, right? Sure. Okay, but here, here we are dedicating an entire show to a lawyer, you, who does a whole lot of this work for nothing. All right, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, a little bit of an anomaly here. <laughs> now, so my, I, I think my viewers are really going to be interested in this question, and I know I am, I am too. What exactly motivates you to do this? Um, for me, there are two different um, um, reasons. I mean, I guess two different, um, totally different categories of my reasoning. One is personal, okay? Um, I know this sounds really cheesy, and, and um, but one reason is because um, I was raised up that way. Um, um, when I when I became an attorney, um, my mother told me that that I should work, um, I should help others. I um, see. Um, she's very aware aware of uh, the cost of lawyers, and she couldn't afford it. So um, when she when she needed legal advice, uh, she couldn't afford it. So she she told me that you are in good position to serve others. So um, I I should consider doing some of that work. Um, professionally, um, many reasons because um, there are lots of people who need legal advice, legal service, um, who really really um, need help. Yeah. And, and, and they can't afford, they can't afford it. They, they absolutely can't afford it. Um, a lot of these people are people who are uh, who has um, government aids, um, social security disability, food stamps, and, and they just absolutely cannot afford to um, defend in criminal cases or file uh, divorce or custody fight custody okay. matters. Um, that's why. Uh, that's why why I do sure. it. Um, okay. All right. And we're going to cross the big divide here in, in, in just a minute, mm -hmm. about halfway through my questions. And we're going to jump back to your award for community legal aid and civil matters, as you just mentioned, where you help people with things like divorce and, and, and foreclosure. But the anniversary I mentioned under Gideon, uh, the Warren Court, the Supreme Court of the United States, I'm reading this, ruled that criminal defendants are entitled to the right to counsel under the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution. Okay, now these are criminals. I mean, they are, well, they're people who are accused of crimes. Uh, do you take those appointments as well? Absolutely. So you, you do both? Yes. Yeah, I do civil work and I do, I, do, I do take criminal appointments. I see. Well, that's kind of interesting. How does that work? In other words, if you're over at the court someday, today, uh, and somebody has been arrested, in jail, whatever, needs a lawyer, mm -hmm. does the judge just pick you out and say, Ms. R you mean I want you to represent this person, or how does that go? That's basically how it works. Um, they do have to fill out, defendants, um, they do have to fill out what's called affidavit of indigency. Yeah. Um, they, they have to disclose their financial situation. Okay. Um, and then uh, when they go to court for doing the arraignment, the judge uh, will ask the defendant whatever they wrote on the affidavit, affidavit of indigency, is that true? Yeah. Um, and, and most defendants say yes. Sure. And then from there, uh, the judge determines that person is in, either indigent or not indigent. But, I mean, there's a lot of lawyers in a courtroom, you mean? Mm -hmm. I guess I pretty much assume most of those people are there with their clients getting paid. So you, you literally step forward and say, judge, I'll, I'll do that for nothing? Um, usually, usually in criminal defense work, it's a uh, very low fee. Okay. Um, at very low fee, you uh, one fourth to one fifth of I uh, uh, of the regular oh, okay. Um, fee. Okay, and obviously the people can't, the, your your client can't pay you. Right. So somehow or another, you, I guess I've done these as well. Right. We 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 get a check eventually from the county. Yes. Okay, but it's a reduced fee. I mean, it's considerably less than what you'd get for uh, retain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do this pretty much on a regular basis? Yes. 
So what do you do? You, you, you just make a point on your schedule to show up in the courtroom on certain like call days when the, the judges are doing arrangements and stuff? Yes, and the judge has, judges have lists of lawyers, attorneys who are willing to do um, the, the appointment work. I see. Um, so how much of your, well, I don't want to necessarily say your practice, but how much of your time, your over, you me the lawyer's time goes to both, the, the volunteer legal services as well as, uh, 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 you know, the criminal, about how much of your practice do you dedicate you mean to the, the pro bono work yeah. side? Um, it depends what's going on. It, it changes, but uh, right now about 30%. About 30%? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I think that's rather enlightening and congratulations. That's certainly <laughs> a very humanitarian thing that you do. Um, Thank um, you. Well, okay. Well, one question always leads to another, Yumi. Um, albeit, you get paid, I do too, actually. F uh, the, the rate is, is different than retained counsel. It's a smaller amount. Are the services any different? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. They, I, I treat my indigent client or appointed client or pro bono client the same as retained client. There, there's absolutely no difference on, on quality of representation or what we do with client with their cases. So, all of the rights and privileges, obviously, that we afford through the Constitution will go to your, your client. The difference will be somewhere at the end you'll have to fill out a form and send it to the county and they'll pay you. Yes. Versus maybe you're in the traditional, your, your, uh, your client paying you. But everything else is exactly the same. I, I guess the same thing with hold true if you go into a hospital and you can't, you can't pay, they're not going to do substandard work on you. Right. Absolutely. Okay. I see. Hmm. This Gideon thing, I mean, I, I, I sort of have a personal remembrance of it. Um, you may have had to do the same thing, but when I started law school, they recommended you read certain books, and Gideon's Trumpet happened to be one of them, and then it was later made into a movie, which is kind of an interesting mm -hmm. movie. But that was in 1963, and I don't think you could remember 1963, <laughs> but I can. Uh, but in 1963, when Gideon, Gideon was decided, uh, there was approximately 43% of criminal defendants were injured, didn't have enough money. I, I got this from the plain dealer, as compared to 80% now, uh, according to that, that article. So the need for criminal defense lawyers is obvious because it, if you look at that span of 50 years, it's almost doubled uh, of, of, of the need for doing what you do when you turn up in court and volunteer your time. Um, but if you, here's where we're going to make the cross the divide now, but if you, in the same article, it's kind of interesting. So the need for criminal defense lawyers is obvious, but 1.2 million Ohioans, Jimmy, are living beneath the poverty level. So again, where do these folks go? Not, they're not, they're not involved in a crime, but they could very well be having their house foreclosed on. That's, that's very common, actually. Absolutely. I've had several mm -hmm. shows on foreclosures. I think this has been several years ago, but when Judge Kimbler came, I think he was my first guest on foreclosures, but I did two or three shows on it. I think he told me then, Yumi, that 40% of his docket was foreclosures. Now, that was about 2008. It was kind of the worst of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, you bankruptcies, divorce, all of these things go on. So, for the benefit of my viewers out there who sometimes tune into the show because they, they obviously have an issue in the law, mm -hmm. where do they go? Where, 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 I mean, if you live in, well, we're, we're broadcasting from Wadsworth, Ohio, but the show pretty much runs around uh, northeast Ohio. But like, let's say just in Medina, where your office is, mm -hmm. where, where does a person go to get the services of a pro bono attorney but not for a criminal matter like Gideon, but mm -hmm. for a civil matter. Where? where? Um, there are three or different, three or four different places they can contact. Um, one place is the the place I got an award from, the Community Legal Aid. Okay. Um, those are lawyers um, who represent exclusively the the indigent indigent yeah. people. Um, 
in civil matters. Um, sometimes they just can't handle all of their workload. So sometimes they ask us, people like me, to help um, take some cases. So they can contact their, their community legal aid. Um, not only do they provide, connect you with a pro bono attorney, but their website and, and um, their website has libraries where you can, you can handle your own case. Oh. Um, also, they have community classes um, informing them about foreclosure, how to file your own bankruptcy, uh, uh, th things like that. So that, that's, a, that's the place to go. Okay. Um, and they can also contact the local bar association. Um, okay, well, they may have a list of attorneys right. who, who Medina, does. Matani County Bar Association here for us. Yes. Um, and Summit County has a little bit of a different program. They have what's called the Modest Means Program, where um, attorneys are actually volunteered to do uh, work, take cases at much reduced fee. I see. So modest means. Modest means. Well, we'll try mm -hmm. to, you mean when we, we air our show, we'll try to put a crawl at the okay. bottom with the number for some of these places so our, our, my viewers can have the opportunity to call. But it sounds that there, there are places to go. There's help. And I mean, for one who could not afford to hire an attorney. And you know, I mean, let's talk about that for just a, a, a bird work just for a second. Attorneys charge, I don't know, anywhere from 150 to $500 an hour, I guess. Yes. Uh, but I don't think you're going to get one for much less than $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and for a lot of folks, they just flat out can't afford that. Uh, so maybe these reduced fee programs could be helpful to somebody. And for the, well, I guess it was appropriate in the day of Gideon and the criminal matters that we were talking about, if somebody is in jail whether he or she got there legitimately or mm -hmm. through some fault in the system, when you're in jail, you can't work, you ain't any money. Okay, so I guess your need for somebody to come out to the jail, mm -hmm. like I guess you do, mm -hmm. uh, when you're mm -hmm. assigned and go find out what's going on, right. that's a little different. But these folks, and maybe some of my viewers will be, if they could call, they could actually get services from attorneys at community legal aid or right. be assigned to people like yourself right. who put your name on the list. We, we get a, a email from community legal aid um, okay. every week. Okay. Uh, here, here are available cases that you can take and we, and we volunteer to okay. take some cases. Yeah. I should mention that Go they ahead. should also, uh, other opportunities, they should also call the, the lawyers directly. Oh. Um, some lawyers. Some if, lawyers are just calling. Right, about. right. Just plead your case. Oh, um, okay. Well, that would be good too. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. Okay. Uh, give me an example of of, of uh, civil, a civil matter that you either have. Well, obviously, you did several to get the award, or you know, just tell me what would be somebody that would come to your door on the civil side through you know community legal aid. Uh, mostly, uh, they are divorce cases and custody matters, um, uh, or, or bankruptcy. Um, okay. They they just. Uh, but bankruptcy, you mean, isn't that in the federal courts? Yes. So, I mean, well, obviously you you can practice there. I guess I can <laughs> too. But I mean, we had to get admitted. Right. Right. Over and above taking the Ohio bar exam, mm -hmm. but. So even if you're an indigent client, you want to file bankruptcy, you can get help to go into the federal courts, the state courts, or wherever you got to go. Right, right. Okay. It's bankruptcy case, it's, it's really nice for attorneys to take because um, particularly bankruptcy cases, the community legal aid work with um, law students to, it's a, it's a very document extensive yeah, uh, sure. practice. Uh, they work with clients to gather all the necessary documents, and and then when when the clients come to actually come to me, they already have all the all I the see. necessary information with them. Um, so basically, I interview them and and generate yeah. forms and a ton of them. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, it, it doesn't take huge amount so of time. So community legal aid not only em not exactly employees. I mean, you you're not getting paid, right? But they use your services, they probably have some staff lawyers, but they also 
uh, law students mm -hmm. from like the local law schools will also participate. Yes. Hmm. That's, yeah. it, it's, it's interesting. Um, you mentioned bankruptcy. Um, I had an attorney by the name of Kate Belfance on a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was interesting. I had her daughter on as well. She's a judge on the mm -hmm. Ninth, Cir Ninth right. District Court of Appeals. And it was the first time I ever had a mother-daughter uh, guest. But Kate uh, pretty much specializes in bankruptcy. And uh, we had, we had, it was an inter interesting show. I mean, it was far more complicated than I really <laughs> understood that it was. And she did a great job of explaining to people what to do. But we pretty much approached it from the fact that, yeah, well, if you want to do this, you're going to have to go hire somebody like Kate to, you know, walk you through it. And I'm sure she's very good at what she does. I think that, actually, I think she's a trustee, trustee as well. Trustee, yes. But albeit complex litigation, which I guess bankruptcy could, would certainly could be, be considered, yeah. probably gets more complex with the more money that you have. But right. nonetheless, you could probably, a person could probably wind up owing a lot of money and not having a lot of money, right? So the same problem, but help is available. Yes. Hmm. So when you take on a bankruptcy case, I want to beat this in the <laughs> I've done some bankruptcy work. Boy, did they take a long time. I mean, you can interview that client, and I'm mm -hmm. sure the law students help you out, but as I remember, it's all elect it has to be electronically yes. filed. Mm -hmm. The petition itself is generally 75 pages or more. You have to actually transfer all that stuff yourself yes. mm -hmm. and, and make that available. Well, in, in the eyes of the electronic filing system, we are all equal, so I'm <laughs> sure whatever you're doing is the same as they do for Mr. Trump if he chooses to file bankruptcy. I don't know if he does or he doesn't. But Okay, well, I, I, I repeated this question. I'm not going to make you answer okay. it again, but uh, I'm going to say it one more time, though. Uh, no difference whatsoever. The quality Absolutely of not. You know, legal advice is legal advice, and whether you're getting paid for it or not, you're, it, it's your good reputation on the line, and that's what totally. you want to do, which certainly is very generous of you. Um, okay, shifting gears. That article I mentioned about mm -hmm. Gideon, I found in the Plain Dealer, and that's actually, I got the, I, I then learned that you had won that award, so I, that's why I called you. But uh, it, it, it said in, in the Plain Dealer, I wrote it down, it says, the article, I learned that a number of attorneys available to take pro, pro bono cases is dwindling. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I imagine there's, there was never been people lining up to work for nothing, okay, even though I'm sure there were a lot of good-hearted folks, but, but the suggestion in the paper, and there was a lot of statistics mm -hmm. that followed it, was that it's, it's getting worse. I mean, the, the need for pro bono attorneys is getting greater, so more people are, well, probably more bankruptcy foreclosure, but the number of attorneys available to do it is getting small. Right. I mean, we probably would have about as many different answers to this question as we would have attorneys we want to talk to, but you want to give it, give it a whirl where, where you think, why do you, where do you see the problem there? Um, right now, the, the recent economic downturn really hit, hit, hit everybody, but it also affected attorneys as well. Um, it just we we don't have financial means to to work for, for a lot of attorneys don't do not have financial means to work for free. Yeah. Um, I think the thing to do is give us more incentive. I know that there is there are some programs where um, your your student loan is forgiven if you serve in public oh, that's sectors. A thought. Yeah. Um, may, maybe not not all of student loans. Maybe if we do pro, pro bono work, g give attorneys incentive to discount their, their if they have student loans, discount student loan. Um, they'll be good. In Medina County, um, many attorneys may not be able, so willing to work for free, but they may be willing to work for reduced, reduced fees. Cost, yeah. Maybe th there's got to be some sort of system with a uh, sliding scale b based on someone, someone's income. Yeah. Um, um, maybe that, that could help. Well, those are, I mean, those are thoughts, but you, your, your answer to the underlying question, you, you're, you're pretty much going back to what probably every, 
nine out of ten people would say, the turn in the economy over the last mm -hmm. eight years or so has definitely affected the legal profession as yes. well as probably a lot of other professions. Mm -hmm. it, it, depending on where a person chooses to get his legal education, I think you got yours at the University of Akron. Yes. I got mine at a school called Thomas Cooley in, in Lansing, Michigan. And well, I mean, it's, the cost, like everything else, goes up as years go by, but my legal education probably was conservatively about $90,000. I imagine yours would be Pretty much so, comparable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in order to become a lawyer, assuming you're paying your own tradition and doing it with loans mm -hmm. or somehow paying it back, you're pretty much entering this 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 profession with probably a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and you haven't started to hire a secretary or an office or anything of that nature. I guess that sort of starts to draw the picture of it. Would be you must, if this is thirty percent of your time, my friend, you must spend a lot of time with your other clients to make ends meet here some days. Yes. Okay. Well. It's, I spent a lot of time in, in my office, for well, sure. Well, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm, I don't know if we're going to garner any support of, my, of my, my, my viewers on attorneys in general. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we do seem to have a reputation, but this, the show sort of points out that, yeah, we do do things that it's valuable advice. You just don't get it easy. Law school is very expensive yes. and it's very yes. taxing. And you, to, then you have the fun of the Ohio Bar Association at the mm -hmm. end of the thing. Uh, so, okay. Well, uh, the time is slipping away on us. I, I thank you so much for being here. I, I think I could probably think of a lot of other questions to <laughs> ask you on this, but uh, to capsulize, there is help available for my viewers mm -hmm. who who. Uh, are indigent or in a position they can't afford attorney and we'll certainly make that available as part of our show. Well, thank you, Yumi, for being my guest. Thank you for having me. Comments made by John's guest on Law Talk are solely those of his guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. view this show and others, go to www.cdclub.org. In the Wandsworth area, a complete listing of dates and times of this broadcast, tune in to WCTV Channel 15 or log on to wandsworthcity.com and follow the links to WCTV. At CZ Club, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens, regardless of age, education, occupation, or wealth. A function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project.